remain standing as I read to you our scripture lesson. If you were here last Sunday, we have, I have read the same scripture. This is in uh, the book of Psalms, in Psalm 111, and I'll be reading from the NIV, the New International Version of the Bible, and this is the Word of God. Praise the Lord, I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They're established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption 
for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Follow his precepts, have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Please remain standing and please hold hands with the, the person near you right now. And be in an attitude of prayer and worship. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Lord, thank you for your abiding presence, O Lord, with us today. We glorify and bless your, your holy name. Lord, we are here because we love you and we need you. Bless, O oh God, those who have celebrated and are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Lord, you know all of them. Bless them abundantly, O oh God. We also pray right now for the needs of your people today. There are many physical needs and we bring them to you, Father God. We live a special prayer for physical healing and wellness, O oh God, for Sam, the classmate of Nadia Shavo. We also live a special prayer for Holly Osweiler, the sister of Ruth Riggs. Her name is Mary, the brother-in-law of John and Jeannie Lance, dog. Sue Shavo, Dennis Whitehead, the father of Drew, the sister of Cheryl Neal, her name is Linda. Tate Schaefer, O oh God, and Shane Mulnix. Lord, we also live a special prayer right now for Dan Beckler and family, O oh God. Because Lord, as, as their mother is now with you, she is now in heaven. And also, Lord God, for the family of Mike Stackley, O oh God. We know, Lord, that uh, his dad, Lord, is now with you too in heaven. And we have the assurance, O oh God, oh God, that we will see them again as promised to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Lord, as we celebrate Labor Day, we pray, Lord, for those who do the dirty works in our lives. Lord, those who break their backs for us. Those who are cheated out of even a minimum wage. Those who have no access to health care. And those who cannot afford to send their kids to college. Help us, O oh Lord, to bind together as a community, as a nation, because you gave one another to us for our existence, O oh God. The garbage men, the police officers, the stock people in our grocery stores, the UPS driver, the pilots, the grocery store clerks, the plumbers, the accountants, the bank tellers, the landscapers, the lifeguards, the doctors, the lawyers, the nurses, the cooks, the waiters, the steel workers, the carpenters, the dietitians, the farmers, the scientists, O oh God, and others, O oh Lord. Help us to realize this Labor Day weekend, O oh God, how dependent we are on one another, O oh Lord. And we are one, we are family. We need each other. May we give thanks for each other, O oh God, this Labor Day. Help us to celebrate and give thanks for each other and appreciate the value, O oh God, the dignity, the contribution that each one makes to keep our country and our community and our lives going. Lord, we pray right now for the whole world, all Christian, Christian missionaries around the world. And those, oh God, Lord God, people in places where there is war and terrorism, oh Lord, and even severe poverty. Lord, bless our nation, our leaders in government, the men and women in our military, all police officers and emergency responders all over the country and even in this community. And right now, oh God, as, as one family of believers, we are lifting up right now, Lord, the victims of the recent, recent shootings, oh God, in Texas. Lord, bless your children and your people in that place and that community, Father God. Be with us, O oh Lord, as we worship you. We surrender everything to you. Bless all the families represented here today, exceedingly and abundantly. Lord, without you, we are nothing. We love you and we need you. All this we ask in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody we say, Amen and Amen. Praise God, you may all be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I have decided to uh, open my, one of my uh, books about church jokes. Yes, before I, I share the message of uh, the Lord today, and this is a story from page 174 of this book, and it says, One day, there was an ecumenical assembly in a particular town here in the United States, and they decided to do it in the town community center. And praise God, because there was one police officer who was there on duty to guard that ecumenical service. When we say ecumenical, uh, all uh, members from different, all people from different denominations come and assemble together. And so during that fire, uh, during that uh, assembly, the, the officer, the police officer who was on duty to guard them, he rushed in shouting as they were gathered as the uh, ecumenical service assembly was, was going on. The police officer shouted, the building is on fire. Well, there were Baptists who were there. The Baptist wondered where they could find water. Because for them, water is very important. And the Quakers who were there quietly praised God for the blessings that fire brings. There were Pentecostals who were there. And then they started to speak in tongues and waited for the Holy Spirit to tell them what to do. There were Lutherans also who were there. The Lutherans posted a notice on the door announcing the fire was really evil. And there were Catholics who were there. The Roman Catholics, they passed the plate, the offering plate, to cover the cost of the damage. Mind you, there were Jews who were there also. The Jews posted symbols on the door with the, the blood of a lamb, as it was in the Old Testament, in hopes that the fire would just pass. And the fundamentalist proclaimed, well, it's the vengeance of God. There were Episcopalians who were there. They formed a procession and they protested. The Christian scientists were there also. They, they denied that there was a fire. The Presbyterians were also there. They appointed a chairperson to form a committee to look, in, to look into the matter, and they planned to submit a written report about it. And then there were Methodists who were there. The Methodists, they went to one corner, and then they prayed there, and after praying in the corner, they called the church board for a meeting and decided and let the, the board decide what to do following the parliamentary procedure by two-thirds or a simple majority vote. <laughs> well, the police officer was there. The police officer, praise God for the police officer, he grabbed the fire extinguisher and put the fire out. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray again. Let us pray again. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are here with us. We can see you through the eyes of our faith, and we can hear you through the ears of our faith. You are here with us today. Your holy angels are here with us today, Father God. And thank you for your holy and abiding presence. As your word is preached, oh God, we take victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, and fill us all with your holy presence, Lord, and open every heart and every mind present here today to the truth of your word. We bring back all the glory and praises to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. One of uh, the things that the ancient Israel remembered was Israel's deliverance from slavery to Egypt. If we will look at the context of Psalm 111. And this was remembered every spring with the feast of the Passover. 
they would commemorate the Lord's miracle of deliverance, of their deliverance from slavery to Egypt. From, from slavery in Egypt as they were led by the Lord to the promised land. And church, as, as Christians, as present-day believers, we take time to remember the marvelous works of the Lord every moment of our lives, most especially when we come together, when we assemble together and praise and worship God together. If we will go back to the book of Psalms in our text today, verses 5 to 9 talks to us about the provisions of God. Again, in verse 5, we are drawn back to the, to the Exodus. The Lord provided food for them. And He provided manna in the, de the desert for the Israelites. And in fact, this mysterious food appeared every, from, from, every day from Sunday through Friday for 40 years. For 40 years. From Sunday until, until Friday. Saturday is not included because that's their Sabbath. They will, they will go and worship the Lord. They are not to gather any food. They are there. They, they need to, to, to come and worship together as an as assembly of God's people. And then in verse 6, the Israelites are reminded how God brought them to the promised land and God gave, gave them the inheritance that he had promised, and he gave them Canaan, the promised land. And praise God, because God provided for their entire journey for 40 years. Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters in faith, I would like to ask you this question. How quick are we to thank God for his provisions do do you ever pray before you eat are we really thankful to God for what he has given us just for a regular meal or a simple meal I remember I met a couple a couple of years ago in it was a couple of years ago here in Iowa when we were still living in, in uh, uh, Emmitsburg. I remember a person I met who said he doesn't need to pray to God be before meal because he pays for his food. He works hard for his food and God did nothing. You know, church, I was shocked and horrified that someone could utter such words considering that that person is a member of a Christian church. But praise God, he's not a member of uh, the Methodist church. But church, reflecting on that, reflecting on that, as I remember that uh, person, church, that is often our attitude because we have become so self-reliant I work hard for my food. I paid for my, for my food. And God did nothing. Church, we have, we have become so self-reliant that we offer only lip service to God for what He has given us. And we even do not bother to say a prayer of thanksgiving to God. And church, remember that the breath that you breathe it's from God. Can I hear an amen? Remember, the life that you have right now, it's from God. Hallelujah. Remember the freedom that you experience right now, it's from God. If, if I don't recognize that, if we don't recognize that, church, we are eternally lost. Remember the physical strength that you have right now in order to be able to work, and including your work, including your job, Everything is from God. Hallelujah. And church, remember the triple ownership of God over us. There is triple ownership of God over us. First, He created us. Can I hear an amen? 
That's the first ownership. Second ownership, that God decided to come down and live as a, become flesh as a human being like us, and He died at the cross at Calvary for us. He redeemed us through the blood of Jesus, and that is the second ownership. And the third ownership is that once you, you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you surrendered everything to Him, then there is the promise of the seal of the Holy Spirit upon us, and that is the third ownership of God over us. Remember your place in the kingdom of God. You were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and our Lord and our Savior, and you have the seal of the Holy Spirit. And so I say and we say, Hallelujah and Hallelujah. Going back to the context of the psalmist, when, when uh, the, the, the book of Psalms, particularly Psalms 100, Psalm 111 was written, the Lord gave the Israelites a land flowing with milk and honey. And that was the promised land. That was Canaan. And if we will put that in our context today, remember brothers and sisters in faith that the good Lord has also given us a land of incredible bounty. Can I hear an Amen. We have so much. We have so much comparing it to, to, the, to the majority of this world's population. But the sad reality is that there are times when a lot of us become ungrateful and we forget God. God has given us so much, yet there are times when we forget the Lord. There are times when our actions show that we forget God in so many ways, brothers and sisters in faith. That's why it's so sad to think that there is only a small percentage in all, and I would, I would like to use the word all, in all, in the context of the United Methodist Church, in all United Methodist churches here in the United States, there, are, there, there is only a small percentage of those, of the membership, of those member, members who go to church regularly. Remember, churches are filled only during Christmas Eve and Easter. But on a regular Sunday, a lot of, a lot of, uh, members of the church, a lot of professing Christians, we forget God, brothers and sisters. The Lord's Day is Sunday for all of us. We come to the assembly of God's people to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We come to the assembly of God's people to worship together, to pray together, hallelujah. Because God has done so a lot of things in our lives, marvelous, marvelous things, amazing things in our lives. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has redeemed us from slavery to sin. We are the assembled people of God. Remember, God has redeemed us. Remember, He has saved us and we should be thankful for that fact. Hallelujah. We should be reminded often of the amazing works that God has done in our lives. Remember, God has offered us new life, which we do not deserve. Remember, God opened heaven for all of us. And I would like to say this. I don't even deserve to go there. We don't deserve to go there because of our sins, brothers and sisters. Because if you, you read the word of God, Romans 3, 23 says, We are all sinners, all fall short of the glory of God. In other words, we do not deserve to go to heaven, but God opened heaven for all of us. Hallelujah and hallelujah. God has sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, to save us, and we should give heartfelt thanks, praise, and worship to the Lord. That's why the psalmist said, He gives th give thanks with His whole heart. And I pray and I hope that like the psalmist, we also give thanks to God with our whole heart. And there should be hunger, there should be thirst in coming together into the assembly of God's people, brothers and sisters, when we really 
understand and truly believe that what the Lord has done for us, we realize how holy and how awesome God's name is. And what is the name of God? His name is Jesus. 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 And so when we come and, and assemble together in this church, we lift the name of Jesus. No one else is lifted up in, in this place. Jesus alone is lifted up in this place. When the assembly of God's people come together and worship and glorify and pray together, we are lifting up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, church, we must always remember the marvelous works of Jesus Christ. As we come together Sunday after Sunday, we remember his broken body just to save us. We remember his pierced hands and feet. And those hands and feet were pierced just to save us. Hallelujah. Sunday after Sunday, we come together, we think of the crown of thorns being pressed down on his head. We think of his beating on his back and all those who were done to Jesus just to save us. Hallelujah. We think of the spear piercing his flesh that was done just to save us. We think of the blood dripping from his back and forehead, stinging his eyes, and those who were done just to save us. What Jesus did at the cross at Calvary was the greatest work that God has done for us. His sacrifice and his death at the cross at Calvary. Hallelujah. We think of someone who did absolutely nothing to deserve that. When we realize that church, we can begin to understand what Jesus went through for us. And all were done. Everything was done to Jesus because he wanted to save us. Hallelujah. He wanted to save us from the wrath of hell. Without Jesus, without Jesus, this person in front of you surely will go to hell. Without Jesus, all of us, and I would like to say this, I don't sugarcoat the gospel. I preach as a, as uh, what the Bible is telling each and every one of us. It's about salvation. And what is salvation? Salvation from the wrath of hell. Salvation from eternal punishment. I don't, we don't deserve to go to heaven. But God opened that for us through Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? And every time we come, we come to this church, as you face the altar, what can you see? You see the cross. You see the cross. And this is a symbol of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His death and suffering at the cross at Calvary. Why did he do that? Just to save us. Hallelujah. When you come to church and you see the symbol of the face of Jesus. Hallelujah. And those eyes are looking at you. Church, he's telling us, I have died for you. Just to save you. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Church, the greatest thing that that God has done for us was when more than 2,000 years ago, He decided to come down and He lived as a human being like us and He went at the cross at Calvary and He died for all of us. Hallelujah. Just to save us. To give us eternal life and a wonderful place in His kingdom even if we do not deserve it. Church, when you truly remember all of this, you will always be led to come before God more and more. Thankful more and more. Worshipful more and more. Praiseful more and more. When you remember what Jesus has done for us at the cross at Calvary, you will cherish, you will respect and fear the Lord more and say, Hallelujah. You will have the desire to follow Jesus and His ways more and more. You will soak yourself in prayer and worship more and more. And so you seek to praise Him more and more in your life. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in faith, always remember that Jesus' body was broken and His blood was shed for us just to save us. 
Hallelujah. In our text today, verses 7 to 9, it says, this is the word of God. It says, the works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Hallelujah. And remembering what Jesus has done for us at the cross at Calvary, you come before him more and more. You come to worship him more and more. You come to praise him and give thanks to him more and more. You delight in his name more and more in the name of Jesus. And you believe, and you know and you believe that without Jesus, you are nothing. Without Jesus, you are hopeless. Without Jesus, you are eternally lost. And remembering what Jesus has done for us at the cross at Calvary would lead us to be more thirsty and to be more hungry of worship, of going to the assembly of God's people. There is thirst and there is hunger for fellowship. Can I hear an amen? There's a thirst and hunger for going to church and worship together with the assembly of God's people. And you know, church, the promise of Jesus is this. If we continue to seek and glorify Him, surely we have an awesome place in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And when God looks at you, when God looks at me, He doesn't see Louis. He doesn't see Haven. He doesn't see Logan anymore. But God sees Jesus. Amen. He sees Jesus. And that is our ticket to heaven. Jesus. Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Brothers and sisters in faith, where are you right now in your relationship with God? I know that uh, uh, this uh, Labor Day, you will be uh, having fellowship with your friends and your family. Am I right? You will see family, you will see friends. Just before you, uh, you come together and before sharing the meal with your family, pray together. Amen. And thank God together. And I tell you, the Lord will bless you exceedingly and abundantly. Every good thing in your life comes from the Lord. Amen. Every good thing, all good things that you experience in your life, they all come straight from the Lord. And we need to be thankful of that. And above all, let us thank God for our salvation. When that God decided to come down and died for us more than 2,000 years ago, and that God's name is Jesus and Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. I will go and prepare a place for you, so that where I am, there you may also be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I mean, let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. Before we...